Scott, great to see you. Thank you so much. And uh, Matt, it's great to see you. Thank you for being here. This is your first reInvent as AWS CEO, so a big milestone for you. Yeah, it's uh, very exciting. I'm happy to be here. You had so many Gen AI announcements. We're not going to get through all of them, but I wonder if you could sort of summarize what it means for AWS and what you think it means in terms of potentially driving spending on AWS, at least in the near term. Well, look, a lot of what we talked about today was how do we help customers really get into um, their generative AI apps into a production environment. And a lot of, we see a lot of customers that have proof of concepts out there. And so we built a platform and a bunch of capabilities to really focus on production use cases. And how do they take customer data, real enterprise, valuable IP, and pull it into these use cases so that they can actually start to drive real enterprise value and not just kind of flashy chatbots on websites that weren't really driving ROI for customers. And so a lot of what we announced today um, and what we're talking about this week is helping customers do just that. Productivity seemed to be a big theme there, at least for developers. What do you think this is going to mean for Fortune 500 companies? When do you think this will start flowing through to the bottom line and maybe eventually improve margins for other companies? Yeah, I think there's a huge opportunity with generative AI to improve productivity. And I think, you know, if you initially looked at where, say, developers were, um, a lot of the initial productivity tools were around code suggestion. But the real value is if you take the whole end-to-end -end development lifecycle and make it so that um, developers can be efficient at everything that they do. And then we also do that for everybody, right? It's for, for marketers, for finance people, for sales folks. If we can make their everyday lives more efficient, take away all of those mundane tasks, those repeatable tasks, those automatable tasks, and let all employees focus on the creative value creating type of activities that they do every day. Typically, in a week, you might only get to do those value creating activities like five, 10% of the time, and the rest of the time you're doing pulling data different sources, trying to look up information, um, doing kind of monotonous, if you're a developer, you might be doing code documentation or other things like that. Um, our view is that we can automate a lot of that and let people be more available to be doing the hard, interesting, creative work that, that is kind of core to what your in individual company might be. And Apple was on stage as well during your yeah. keynote. You guys have had this long-standing relationship, but it's not a relationship that either Apple or Amazon talks about all that much. What is the strategic importance of Apple, especially now that they're publicly using your chips? Well, yeah, we've had a, a partnership with Apple for, for more than a decade, and, uh, and they're a fantastic partner. They, uh, they push us on a lot of more things. They push us on scale. They push us on new capabilities that they need, on security that they need. Um, and so they're, they're a fantastic partner to learn from. Um, but we also love partnering just, you know, they, they came to us and said, how can you help us with our generative AI capabilities? We need infrastructure. Um, in order to go build, and they had this vision for building all the Apple intelligence and stuff, the, some of the things you heard talk on stage today. Um, and they've been great early adopters from some of our technologies, including Tranium 2, which is our, our brand new AI chip. Um, and they've been early beta testers of that as well. And, um, and I think that's a, it's a really symbiotic relationship where we learn a lot from them, they push us, and they get a ton of value in using AWS in the cloud.